Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, Jeremy King. Jeremy is the Regional Vice President, EMEA, of the PCI uh, Security Standards Council. Jeremy leads the Council's efforts in increasing adoption and awareness of the PCI Security Standards internationally. In his role, he works closely with uh, Council and representatives on its policy setting uh, executive committee from uh, American Express, really Discovery, JCB, International MasterCard, <laughs> Union Pay, Visa, and I'm sure others are in there as well. Da, 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 da. Um, <laughs> Et cetera, et cetera, and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, yeah. with that, um, you know, it's uh, great to have you here. And thank you uh, very to much. get a little bit from the payment card side of things. Yeah, so. thank you very much. Uh, and uh, hello, everyone. Um, it has been very interesting being here to listen to all of you guys talking about the post-quantum computing world. Uh, I'd like to try and put a perspective around the payments side of things and uh, some of the challenges that, that we're going to have to deal with in terms of coping with this. Uh, we've done that bit. So, and really, this is really important, this slide, because this is essentially payments. This is the payment world that I live in, that if you're involved in it, that you all live in. And it's a balance. We have to constantly balance between security and ease of use. We can make things really secure, but if it means that the transaction doesn't go through, it's no darn use. So we're trying to make it secure enough. We can also mean that we can do so many checks that it takes so long for that transaction to go through that it's no darn use. In the modern world, we have become time intolerant. We don't like queuing. We don't like waiting. Whereas five, ten years ago, we would happily stand at the cash desk while the uh, point of interaction machine dialed up to the local bank and then sent the data at a bitstream of however. Uh, now, with contactless transactions, this is sub half a second. So anything we do that is going to increase the time of that transaction above sub half a second starts to be a challenge. And you can see where some of those discussions have gone around things taking a heck of a lot longer, how this starts to grate with me. The other thing, and this is the really important thing, underpinning everything we do in the payments world is hideous legacy. Is a legacy system that are so old that you wouldn't believe them. But they are the world we live in. They are the world we have to deal with. And for many of those payments to be able to work at all means they have to work at the lowest system capability, which is poor. And this is our world. As we all know in the nursery rhyme, we have the three choices of the house for the piggies. Uh, and we know where they all end up. Um, but in terms of turning this into security, we have low-level security, mid-level security, high-level security, and start thinking about this in terms of how we are using security in payments. And, okay, we've started with some low-level security, and the criminals have broken that, so we've gone to a mid-level and then to a high. But if I move my house of straw into the house of bricks, is it secure? Can I still use it? Because I've got the house of bricks surrounding it. And that's a lot of how payment systems work in banks. There is very old technology surrounded by a secure environment. And of course, the wolf comes along and does his brute force attack. And he will brute force and blow down all of those apart from the house of bricks. Uh, PQC has given him a RPG. He doesn't need to blow it down. He is just going to blow the thing apart. And that's what you guys have presented over the last couple of days, you are introducing this new thing that is going to blow apart everything we thought was secure, and we have to deal with it, bearing in mind our scales and trying to keep the whole thing working. It's quite a challenge for us. We're, we're, we, we have a lot of issues. And then we have to understand, in our world, we have the criminals. 
And the criminals have been attacking us since forever. And as we change, they change and react. As we improve, they do different things. And it's never one type of criminal. And it's never one type of thing they're after. And this has changed significantly post-COVID. We're seeing that the criminals are now not only monetizing payment data, they are monetizing data full stop. So you've got to understand what it is that you have that the criminals want, what it is that the criminals are going to take from you, and what you need to do to protect that. And it's different things in different areas, even within the payment space. And it is a constant challenge. And certainly between the ethical groups, the organized criminal gangs, that's mostly my world, ordinary hackers, state-sponsored. We know if we get a state-sponsored attack against us in the payment space, we're going to struggle because they have the technology, they have the capability, and that is the, probably the biggest threat where some of this comes in. And then, as we are really here and understanding, technology just keeps changing. Every time I think I'm getting somewhere and making the payment system secure, something changes. That's the original very phone point of interaction device was wonderful to improve security uh, until the criminal just broke it apart. There's a new very phone device. That's a typical point of interaction device as we have at the moment. But we're just about to move into mobile payments. And um, gosh, I've got his name. Gustavo's presentation just filled me full of confidence, not um, because the challenge is there. So we're moving to the technology. And it's quite interesting as well from the last presentation where you said 2035 is the date when we expect to have everything in place. By 2035, we may not even have chip cards. They may have gone. So we're trying to solve a problem and trying to get people to move to something that we don't even know is going to be used by the time we get there. That's quite a hard sell to in the banking and the payment community when we're dealing at trying to keep the criminals out today. And, and again, that is quite a challenge. And from the PCI's perspective, we started back in 2005 with a data security standard just to try and stop people storing vast quantities of plain text pound data. And then also to try and improve their data security. And as you can see by the blue squares, we've improved that over a number of times in that intervening period. You can also see we've had to introduce a whole raft of new standards to cover all of the different technologies, all of the different ways that we can see uh, the criminals attacking us to try and, I, I would say, I'd love to say keep ahead, but I'll say keep up with the criminals to try and prevent them stealing the card data uh, and, and really causing us all the pain. And the earlier presentation uh, from Robert told us all about the amounts of money that these criminals are stealing from us. So it's a never-ending race for us. It never stops. And we'll never win. We only got to try and not lose. The old story about being chased by a bear, if there's two of you, you don't have to outrun the bear, only your friend. Or well, not your friend, if you've just outrun him and the bear's going to eat him. Um, but this is the reality. We're trying to keep our systems ahead of the criminals. So we've got so many problems. I have so many problems convincing organizations to take action now to convince them to take action for something that's going to really be a problem in 5, 10, 15 years is quite an ask. But if we don't start now, then... Come that time period, we're going to be in a major problem. We are going to be in the house of straw because we haven't taken the steps now to get ourselves ready. Uh, and and cryptography is not, not immune to this. This, this. this is our real world. We understood within the council that SSL, which was the way to secure all of the things on the internet, if you saw the padlock, it's safe. Smile, do the transaction, wonderful. 2014. It's broke. We know it's broke. So we have to react. We are the standards body. We write the standards for payment security. And we went in 2015, we, April 2015, we said, right, by June 2016, you've got to have got rid of it. And we, before we said that, we went out to our community and said, 
if we put a date of 2016, by the time you've got to get rid of this, are you going to be able to do it? Yes. Great. We put it in place, and within six months, they all came back and went, no. We cannot get rid of it within that time period. So we had to change our standard in 2015 to say, right, we're moving the migration date away from SSL to 2018, three years after it should have gone. Because the community, the systems, the banks were not in a position to be able to cope with transactions not coming through using that process. And then by 2018, we could finally get rid of it. And now I'm hearing the same thing for TLS, TLS 1.2, which is where we're at, where it's now, whoa, we're not sure about some of these. And it's like, mm -mm, don't switch that off because that's what the world is using. TDES, we've heard it mentioned. TDES is our life. It is everywhere. It is everything. It is how payments are being processed in a secure way. And our good friends at NIST have said from the 23rd of December, uh-uh, worst thing that ever came across our industry. Because you can't just switch it off. If I switch it off, payments stop. If payment stops, it's not a good place to be. So we have to keep the payments going. We know it's a house of sticks, but it's how we are using it. And it's one of the other things, it's interesting when I go back to the, oh, no, I'll go forward, it's two back, around SSL. There's broken and there's broken. For a lot of you guys here, your capabilities and skills in the nice laboratory environment allows you to attack us and break things. The criminals having that same skill set and utilizing that offensively against the payment system is a completely different broken. It's a broken we've not seen. Because if your criminal breaks into your system, there is so much data he can steal without doing anything that am I going to go through all this hassle of trying to break this cryptography or can I just steal what's there? Or if I open this file, oh, it's the decryption key. Well, that was easy. We make it too easy for the criminals in the real world. We can see that the theoretical issues, but to try and cope with that, we have to look at the real world scenarios. And we know we are going to continue to use TDES for a number of years because that's how the banks legacy systems work because some of the banks, the new banks, all the challenger banks, all these new ways of doing things, brilliant. If you're involved with those, you'll be glad. Yeah, we, we're, we're all over that. Legacy, no, yes. Unfortunately, some of the existing established banks are not in that place. And it's like, it's like playing Jenga. We are trying to move a piece that we know is not secure and still keep the whole Jenga stack in place. And PQC is a hammer that's coming through that lot. So how we are going to manage it is a challenge. And we know where we want to be. We know where we should be. But if I go top right and the bank systems or the payment systems or the merchants go, that's all very well and good, but I can't process that payment, then I may as well reach to the moon. I have to, I have to move with the industry. Can I try and encourage the industry to move? Absolutely. Can you encourage the industry to move? Absolutely. We all know we have to move. Are we moving fast enough? No. Do we, can we move faster? We'll try, but the real world is trying to get money to spend for replacing systems is, is a challenge, and we've heard of the presentations on that. On a course, then, Every now and then, along comes something new that changes everything. And, and good old London buses, you never get one, you always get two. And what are they? Well, obviously, one's quantum computing. For us, that's like payments today. We are riding, you know, the penny farthing compared to the jet bike of quantum computing. We have to try and catch up. 
And what does this really mean? So this is our acceptable key levels and key strengths for use in a POI. So TDES, uh-uh, that should have gone already, but we're still using it. And then IFC, ECC, FFC, they're gone. So I'm left with not much. I'm left with AES. The world of payments has put its heart and soul in the savior of the universe, AES. That is where we're heading. Now, the problem is, is yes, we have ASS. Yes, we've had it in our standards. Yes, it's in um, the, the point of interaction vendors are putting it in there. So it's, it's in place for a lot of things, but the systems for a lot of people just can't cope with it. They can't do an AES transaction yet. So I've got to get these processes in place to be able to move to where we want to be to try and protect that data going forward. And thank you, IBM. I pinched this off one of your um, documents you put on out. Uh, when you look at the roadmap, and it's been, you know, uh, lots of people have mentioned this, of, of when this is going to come in, it's like, okay, really it's going to start being an issue in 2026 plus. So we'll see how, how we get there. Um, so do I need to be worried? Does the payment industry need to be worried today? Um, it, yes, it should be, but with so many other problems, I've got other issues. I've got bigger issues, to challenges to sort out. You know, if it says 2048-bit RSA is going to be um, broken sometime after 2026, okay. But again, I'll come back to there's broken and there's broken. Um, do I see criminals buying quantum computers? Well, I hope you've put better con you know, restrictions on who you're selling these to than selling them to the criminals. Can they go on the cloud and use this? It, well, it probably, and they probably will. So you will need to check who's coming into your quantum computers to do this. Um, are there going to be um, nation states that are going to use quantum cryptography to attack you? We don't like to say it, but yes. But is that broken for us in the paint space? No, not yet. I've got, you know, 10 years plus. Okay, we can start ourselves on that roadmap. And even when we do, these are the real world challenges we face. One of the other, I think Robert spoke earlier. There are 250 million POI around the world globally. Most of those are not or do not have the capabilities for remote update, which means I need a man in a van to go to 250 million locations to update every point of interaction terminal, which means that is probably my 10 years of time I've got just doing all these updates. I've got 3.2 million ATMs in use globally. I promise you there will be some of those still using OS2. They do. That is the world we live in, in payments. That is how old we are. Uh, the HSMs, I've listened with interest. The HSMs guys were smiling. I've never seen HSM guys smiling so much. They, they, they see the business opportunity. Good on you guys. I look forward to seeing those coming through because they underpin us. They are the, the fundamental underpinning of, of payment security. So they're being able to move that. Brilliant. Happy with that. And it's great that we've got these. And I was really happy until Yup's presentation this morning went, oh, yeah, these, can all, these are all weak against side channel attacks. I have lived my life with side channel attacks. I was there near the star. I've been working on this stuff, on chip cards, on point of interaction terminals. It's interesting about the new technology. When, when I was early days of working on a point of interaction terminal, it had so many components in it, the noise was unbelievable. You couldn't make out anything. And then gradually those components started getting pulled in, removed, and we started using just a single chip computer, and suddenly, Oh, we could hear it singing. And suddenly we are became aware of the side channel attacks against the terminal. We've always known against the chip. And if I've got the challenges of that in this space and also all of the memory issues and all of the slow performance, 
it really doesn't fill me with confidence at all that this is going to help. So I can see we've got not only the work to get ourselves moving to that space, we have got the challenge of getting ourselves there and making it work in a way that the modern teenager is going to be able to stand there and complete the transaction in under half a second in a secure way. So what does this mean for us as the PCI Security Standards Council? There's the old way we're used to. There's the new way we have got to move to. How do we write standards that are going to be ready for post-quantum computing uh, world? Um, we have to. We're going to be attending and listening to you guys. You are the ones, you are the community of experts that are going to be able to guide us on where our standards need to go in the future to help protect the payment space because that still remains the challenge. We have still got to protect the payment space. And if that wasn't bad enough, this is my real and present danger. I have more problems today with the challenge of AI in payment security than something that's going to occur in 10 years. And you're going to say, but that's a sledgehammer. Yes, but that's now, clear and present danger today. So I've got to manage them both. And if them two ever come together to make something super bad, then I'm really struggling. We are a standards body. We try and maintain our standards. We try and see where the future is going and move with them. Our 15 standards apply across the payment sector and across the industry. Uh, and we have various ways you can be involved with us. And I'd be glad to. So quick summary of where we're at. It isn't a case of right and wrong. It isn't a case of let's all move to the house of bricks. It's about managing that process. We have to manage that process against the challenges of the payment industry that we have today, that we're going to have tomorrow and the future. And we can't see the crystal ball. We don't know where payments are going to go or, or how they're going to change. We can see them changing. We can see new ways of doing a payment, different challenges. And we can see the challenges of PQC coming along. And we know the clock is ticking. So we have to start and, and listening to events and, and listening to the fantastic work that you people are doing is really helpful. But we have to take that and turn it into the real world challenges so we can move it forward and then understand how long it's going to take not only for the potential to be realized in the laboratory environment, but how much longer do we have on top of that before the criminals can actually use it against us. And that brings me right back to the start, which is I'm back to the scales. I want to be able to provide a good level of security. That's our focus. Not the best, because the best can stop things working. Definitely not the worst this good level of security that provides sufficient risk prevention, that provides a frictionless environment to the payments industry that will still rely on whatever legacy infrastructure is there when we get to wherever there is. But it's, that is the world of the council. That is the world of payment security. That is the challenges we see today, tomorrow, and the future, and everything we've talked about and you've talked about for the last couple of days just make that more challenging, more interesting. If you're a techie person, you get more interested in this, but it is there. Um, thank you very much. Excellent. Okay, I have a feeling there's going to be a few questions on this one, but first I just want to say, I don't want to use my cards anymore. I can't, <laughs> I can't even go to an ATM and use that to get cash out. So <laughs> with that, please, your question. That was, uh, that was a great presentation. Thank you for that. Um, I come from my, my past from the payment industry. Uh, and 10, 15 years ago, there was a proposal to migrate EMV to EMV next gen. And we all know how that ended up. How confident are you that this will be, I think this is way more difficult than EMV next gen. Um, how confident are you that we'll succeed? Um, that's a very, very good question. Um, I'm confident I'll see it. I'm absolutely confident I'll see it. I am not sure in what guise, format, or method 
I think that the industry at the moment is in such a significant period of change with so many new ways of doing things that it could be that we see it in any way different, you know, any number of different formats. Um, but whatever that format, by the time we get to 2035, which seems to be a, a reasonable date that a lot of people have talked about, we need to make sure that we have taken the considerations of PQC in, into account and put in the processes so it can operate in that environment. Because if we don't, then we're in, we are in trouble. The, the scales have gone completely the wrong way. So quick quick additional question. Do you see a big difference from where how it went with the EMV next gen and this one? Yes. Okay. Yes. I think if, if I can give any sort of, sort of way to think about it is um, if you think about where we were in 2010 in technology and payments industry, um, this is almost like pre-iPhones and iPads to now, 13 years later. So think of that in that same sort of period. Where are we going to be? It's going to be really quite exciting and challenging. Uh, yes, uh, um, um, uh, I, we heard about uh, all these uh, payment uh, systems that cannot be updated in the field. Uh, are you preparing uh, to have more uh, ways of making those agile? Because we heard the word agile quite a lot uh, during these days. Uh, so uh, obviously they need to be connected to a, a network, I suppose. Uh, uh, so are there any plans, uh, any plans for that? So I think the uh, point of interaction terminal vendors like the HSM terminal manufacturers are smiling because yes, if they can see a way of replacing every terminal with a brand new one that can be remotely updated, then that will be, that will, they will love that. Uh, so there will be changes for a lot of organizations that so will see that coming through. There will still be, and, and when you look at all of those, those um, merchant locations, the massive, you know, your 90% of small merchants are what the Americans love to call mom and pop stores. And they've got a terminal. And the other challenge we face, by the way, with, with payment technology is it works. You make it and it works for years. And the problem is, is if you've got something that's working, you don't want to get rid of it, especially if it's going to cost you money as a small merchant to replace it. So why do I need to change when the old one works just fine? Uh, and that's the, that's the other sort of legacy issue we face is at some point we're going to have to do, and I think someone mentioned about you know, when you go from your iPhone 10 to your iPhone 12 to your iPhone 14, the iPhone 10 suddenly doesn't work. Maybe that's at some point we're going to have to sunset older stuff. We've done it with certain things. We saw that when we went from, uh, when we introduced EMV cards in the first place into Europe and then into the US, it gave us an opportunity to change. And going from chip to contactless, we gave us an opportunity to change. So it will change, uh, but it'll be slow. And there'll be stuff that's out there forever that you're just trying to find and hoover up. And Jeremy, we, uh, a couple of questions we'll take from the online forum, okay. uh, if you've got a, another moment or two to share with us. Mm -hmm. um, this one you sort of hit on, but uh, uh, the, the question is, uh, is an interesting one nonetheless. It's a, and it's a bit lengthy, so please uh, bear with me here. Uh, PCI DSS was updated to version 4 in 2022. Uh, it defines strong cryptography as uh, supporting a minimum of 112 bit uh, of security, which you did cover the, the, the nuances there uh, and the challenges. Uh, goes on to, to iterate you know, that, that that has been deprecated and, and should be deprecated. Mm -hmm. The crux of the question is, uh, you know, uh, what is PCI's position uh, with regards to mobilizing an active management of modern cryptography in the payment card industry? That's a very good question. Uh, and and we, work with, uh, we work very closely with NIST. Um, you know, we try to collaborate and cooperate. It is just when this do the certain things that the payment industry is not ready for, that's when, that's when the challenges occur. And, and the ramifications of some of these things for organizations are, are, are quite high. But from a council's perspective, we actually, we actually, and I said it, we try to get a, a good level of security. And that good level of security has to take into account of what is 
what is capable of being supported by the industry. And if the industry is not capable of supporting uh, a higher level, then forcing everyone to move there before they're ready just stops payments. Um, a classic example of this, I was talking to an organization who was a payment service provider just last week, and he said, saw about the TLS 1.2, I'm using it. So I looked at these and I was like, yeah, I'm using some of these. So he said, being the good person I am, I switched them off. I'll stop using those, they're not secure. The next day, 90 of his biggest customers rang him up and said, we are unable to process any of our transactions. And so he said, what did I do? I switched them all back on again. I cannot lose 90 of my most important uh, customers. I cannot stop transactions going through. So then I've got to try and work out how to migrate those guys to a better level. And that's the, that's the real thing. It's not that we can do this and then the world will follow. We have to go all together with everybody at the same time or it just doesn't work. And that's a problem. And you, and you sort of actually in that answered the second question, which I'll paraphrase to say the following. Um, you know, why doesn't PCI just turn around and say, thou shalt do this, no ifs, ands, or buts. We need better security. Too bad. Move ahead. Put your foot down. Yep. There are no options to, to run things that are considered insecure now. Yeah. Um, we'd get ignored. Basically, um, we, we, if we do something that the world is not ready for, and this will find that a bit with TDES, the world just can't switch off TDES. It's too embedded. So we have to go, guys, we're in the red here. We need to move. And, and we have to look at it from our perspective as a council. We have to work as a community. We're working with the brands. We're working with the banks, working with everybody in this place to try and get everyone to shift. And, and we do we do cajole, we do send notifications out. It's not like this comes as a surprise. We've been watching it and telling everyone for, for as long as it's been happening. But at the end of the day, you've still got to try and get somebody to spend the money. And at times when there's financial crises and, and interest rates are going through the roof and organizations are trying to just keep themselves alive, and you go, do you know what? You've got to spend all this money on new systems that won't make you any more sales, but it'll make you a little bit more secure. Yeah. That goes down well. So it's trying to get everyone to come along and move to that improved way. But it is challenging. Great. With that, I want to thank you very much. That was a, a very informative uh, presentation. Thank you very much. In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.